My name's Anthony, I'm from Nottingham. I'm originally from Wolverhampton, so you might, that might be my accent. So my name's Michelle, I'm married to Anthony. I've got two children and this is my journey to God. Over time, I've always wondered whether there was a God. Um, you know, there must be more to life than this. But I didn't really know where to look. Where would you find these answers? So many religions and stuff like that. So over the period of my time, I've been through some tough times. I've like lost my father when I was just a young boy. So I have like called out to God. I was a complete atheist. Didn't, didn't know anything about Jesus. Didn't know anything about when he died, when he was resurrected. Very ignorant about everything. And my husband's been trying to open my eyes to God the last year, maybe. And I was like, no, 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 no. I feel like I've done it all. I've ticked all the boxes. I've been very lucky. I've had money. I've had lots of, well, not lucky, but you would think it was lucky in, in a worldly point of view. Um, I've had, you know, I've been with many women. I've been out uh, on the rave scene, taking recreational drugs, had a lot of fun and stuff like that. But I always had this hole in my, in me that I couldn't fill. It's just like a loneliness or something that you can mask by having all these good times, doing all these things. And then as I got older and all these things start to slow down, I settled down and found a wife. I still had the hole. So I just, in the end, I had to just cry out to Jesus. Jesus, I'm, I feel like I'm broken on the inside. Nobody knows, nobody can see it on the outside. Like a depression maybe, I don't know, a heaviness. But it's consuming me. And I feel like I'm going to, everything that I've made good in my life, I'm going to destroy somehow because of this hole. It's just, I can't, I can't, I can't hold it any longer. It's breaking me. So I just remember crying, getting on my knees, Jesus, if you're real, I need you to come into my, come into my heart and fix me because I can't fix it myself. I've tried. And then the next day, peace, peace was in me. And I knew Jesus was real. So, it was just a time then I had to surrender, but still I didn't want to surrender because it, I understand it's very difficult to give up the old life. So, okay, so how is how can we prove God? So then I realized that everything is intelligent design. Everything, me, the plants, everything that's, um, that man makes is based off nature. You know, and nature's not intelligent design, but when make some, man makes something, that's intelligent design. That doesn't make sense. So, yeah, so then I realized that God created the heavens and the earth. And then I realized that Jesus was prophesied in the Bible multiple times in the Old Testament, hundreds of times. Okay, so now it comes to the point of sin. Now I've sinned. Still, we were going out and drinking. So I was praying every morning, God, I can't do this on my own. You're going to have to. You're going to have to bring my wife along for the journey. She's a complete atheist. I prayed this maybe six months, eight months. One evening he was laying in bed and he's watched a video on Sodom and Gomorrah, a film that had been made. And I was just kind of watching it, you know, without taking too much interest. And then all of a sudden I was drawn into watching this documentary. And it, it, was, it was so heartfelt, Timo, that was doing the documentary and he was talking about what happened and how God had destroyed this whole city and it like really captured my heart and it just drew me into it so so much from nothing to like being really interested in who is this man who is this who is this God who can do this my heart started to be filled a little bit with intrigue and and wonder and and just wanted to know more and more so I was still an atheist I still didn't really believe my husband kept sort of saying, you know, you need to, you need to just open your eyes, open your ears, open your heart just to what, what he can do, who he is. And I did. I took that leap of faith. She got in touch with a guy on YouTube, Timo, about the, the video. Two days later, we were having video calls with him and uh, Labo and Cheryl. And then we just took the plunge and we literally took the plunge and got baptised. We got baptized and for two weeks, nothing changed in my life. I was drinking still. I still was empty. I was negative. I had void disappointment. Just felt good, you know, and then we went out a couple of times more. We got drunk. I was searching for some kind of happiness. Sorry. Just 
searching for something to, to fill the missing piece in my heart. And nothing changed. And, I, and then I watched the movie, The Last Reformation. And I saw all these people getting baptized in water and everything. And, and I saw the freedom on their faces. And I didn't feel like that. So I started to question that, well, is, is there a God? What, you know, what's going on? Why don't I feel like this? And I was still sinning and drinking. And, and then one day, both me and my husband, don't know what we was doing. We felt like something had just come upon us, something had hit us. And the desire to drink had gone. My heart felt full. Poof, everything just felt like we felt a, like a separation from God, maybe. That I hadn't even felt that I was connected much, but I felt a massive separation. And I was like, this doesn't feel right. And then I thought, we need to live our lives better now. We like got co convicted. And literally in that moment, all desire to drink, to sin, to uh, any desires of the world went. And I was like, whoa. And for my wife, at, the, at exactly the same time, we both got convicted. So we knew we got touched by God in that moment. So then God was real. The fear had lifted from my shoulders. The anxiety had gone. I felt loved. I felt like somebody was wrapping me in their arms and keeping me warm and it just filled me with everything I was searching for it filled me up completely I felt I, f I felt like God was upon me we started reading the Bible we had a thirst to read the Bible we started reaching out to people other Christians I've been reading the Bible in the Bible it says that Jesus right so we have to go out and um, he was sick and preach the gospel and cast out demons and it's been weighing heavy on my heart to want to go out and do all these things because that's what he asked us to do and he gave us so much he gave his life for us so the least we can do is go out and, and do what he asked us to do so this week we've gone out and i was so afraid I didn't want to talk to anyone and anyone that we went to talk to i was like no 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 but you know cheryl that i was with is sort of said no, we're going to do this and she'd push me and we'd ask people and we approached a mother and daughter in West Bridgeford Park and the um, daughter had disc problems and loads of back pain so I prayed for her and then it turns out she had one leg longer than the other so I was like no I can't do this I can't do this I can't do this and she was like you can do it so we checked her feet and her feet were about a centimetre out so we prayed we prayed and her leg grew in my hand. <laughs> Amen, her leg grew and I, until you see something, you kind of think, oh, I, couldn't, I could never do that. But when you see it, you realize how powerful God is. He had gout in his knee and his knee was like this. And he, he, had, he, had, he was fully baptized and he had found God. And he's like, yeah, you can pray for my knee on my knee. So I was like, okay. So I put my hand on his knee and literally could go, Father, please, in Jesus' name, heal his knee. And his knee went, Trrr. and he was like, oh, okay, that feels much better. So doing it again, Trrr, even more. Yeah, 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 that feels good. That feels good. And then I prayed one last time and, he, and I could literally feel the shape of his knee just as my knee is. And he was like, oh, it's so full of joy. He just gave me a hug. In that moment, I was like, this is so real. This is just, this is amazing. And there's no fear. And then I was like, I was on fire. I just wanted to ask people, even if they, when I was asking them if I could pray for them, they was like, no, not interested. I didn't matter. I knew that just that what next person, we could do some good. And that was, that's all it's about then. It doesn't, the fear's gone. Just you just want to love on people and yeah, share your experience. You, you just can't. It's just over, it's just flowing out here. It's non-stop. You can't stop it. I don't understand loads, but every day I'm learning more. My faith is growing so much. I'm reading the Word. I'm sharing the gospel. Gospel. I'm getting persecuted by people that I thought were friends, but this is my life now. There's no regrets, there's only happiness, there's only fulfillment, there's only pleasure, there's only love, there's nothing else, there's no, there's no other way. 
there's no other way. I pray all the time, I speak to God openly, just talk to him like this, just as you talk to a family member or a friend and just press into the word. Everything you need to read about or need to know about God is in Jesus' word in the book. Sometimes you have to just jump into it and don't, don't hold back. Once you've experienced God, there's just nothing, there's nothing else like it. It's just completely transforms every, every aspect in your life. God is so good.